today. We're going to be talking about uh, a concept that has been percolating for the past couple of months, uh, something called Spartan Core. We're going to tell you a little bit more about what that means. Uh, many of you may have or should have a document that looks like this. If you don't, raise your hand and I can uh, try to get you one. Um, I suspect it'll change drastically after the conversation today, but uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jerry Reed. Uh, I work with a unit here on campus called MSU Global. Uh, in short, what MSU Global does, it's an uh, office within uh, the provost area, and we work with faculty and departments and uh, colleges who are really interested in doing three things. Um, increasing their revenue generating opportunities uh, to typically off-campus uh, audiences, building reputation, uh, whether that's individual faculty rep uh, reputation or reputation of their program or their project that they're working on, uh, hopefully leading to additional research opportunities. Uh, and then the last piece is really research, helping you expand and extend uh, your research opportunities, uh, usually where uh, technology can help enable them. So uh, we're a technology shop uh, helping insert technology into projects that hopefully build your opportunity to make more money increase your reputation and increase your research opportunities. So that's, that's what we're really about. Um, for those, how many uh, would this be their first Fanning the Flames event by a show of hands? Awesome. Awesome. I can honestly say this is the biggest one, so thank you. Uh, I'm not sure what we have for you in the way of prizes for the attendance record. Um, we were hoping, yes, babies. Uh, the bobbleheads aren't made yet, so uh, <laughs> you'll have to come back to another one to get the, get the bobblehead. But in relationship to uh, a couple of housekeeping uh, details, one of the things that we're going to try to do today, uh, and for those of you who haven't been to uh, a Fanning the Flames event before, we, we host an event each year, typically in the fall, and for those uh, taking notes, uh, we will have our annual Foxfire event on September 25th this year. Uh, it'll be at the Kellogg Center in the Lincoln Room. It starts at 8.30 in the morning. And typically what we try to do at the Foxfire event is highlight different innovative projects that faculty, units, uh, different areas around campus have been working on uh, over the past year uh, or are thinking about getting started so they can come and present their ideas to the group. We've done the Foxfire event for the past couple of years and as a result of last year's uh, work, someone said, boy, we guys really need to do this more than once a year. This is really pretty cool. So some of our alumni from the event got together and said, what if we did something called Fanning the Flames, where each month we got together and people had the opportunity to bring concepts, ideas, innovative projects to the table, and we could bring great minds like all of you together to talk about them. And so that's what really Fanning the Flames is about. Uh, we've, we've been doing this since January. We've had things like MOOCs. We've had things like open commercialization. Uh, different people bringing those topics to the table to present what they're thinking about and get feedback uh, from, from great minds like yourself. So that's what we plan to do today. We want to present an idea uh, called Spartan Core. Uh, some of you might have heard uh, about a project called Spartans Without Borders. Uh, it was a project uh, dealing principally with alumni and, and their ability to be able to uh, continue on with MSU after they, they leave and go on really exciting projects that are going to take on global challenges around the world. That conversation has kind of spun off and said, um, hey, wait a minute, why wouldn't we make that same type of opportunity available to our students? Why wouldn't we build that into their uh, core curricular process and actually be able to give them credit for that experience and actually be able to help them get recognized for that, that experience while they're here at MSU? Bundle that together with alumni, bundle that together with community experts, bundle that together with partners. And so that's the concept that we're gonna talk about today. And so we're going to have kind of a, an overview to give you a sense for what this thing is, at least at this moment. Uh, then we're going to do some small group work, but we're really hoping to get your feedback, your ideas, your objections, your, oh my gosh, this will never work at MSU because, or this is the greatest thing ever, um, why can't we start it tomorrow? Those, those are the kinds of things we want to talk about today. So um, by way of introduction, just so you have a, an idea of who some of the people are around the room as we work through uh, let me start with Dale Elsoff uh, in the back. Dale, stand up. Uh, Dale, Dale is my co-partner uh, in, in this endeavor. Uh, so uh, we, we try not to give you any sharp objects, but if you need to throw something, um, the, we're the two people you probably want to aim at uh, while you're doing that. Christine Geith, uh, 
in the back. She's going to speak in a moment and kind of give you a, a broad overview because this, this idea of how this could work at MSU is, is uh, her brainchild along with a, a group that. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, so don't throw stuff at her because she's my boss. So don't don't do that. Uh, then Danielle, the boss uh, over here uh, for the Creativity Exploratory. You're going to hear a little bit about what the Creativity Exploratory is. They're working with us on this project and they're going to help facilitate the discussion today. Uh, as, as kind of a, at this point, although I think they're tainted now, kind of a non-biased viewpoint uh, in, into all of this, but, but you didn't hear that from me. So, without further ado, uh, one last detail though. If, you're, if you are on Twitter, um, we ask that you use the hashtag FTFMSU. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to kind of follow uh, what's going on, and if you wanted to see what some of the previous topics have been and what people are talking about, you can look up that hashtag, and there's some, some good stuff from the past six months uh, that's there as well. So, overall, any questions before we kick this thing off? Uh, is everybody in the right place? You <laughs> didn't just come for the coffee and the bagel, and you're going to bolt. Um, one last logistical thing. Uh, typically, these events run from 11 to 12. We thought, and we were right, that this would garnish a lot of excitement and intrigue. So, we actually extended the time to 1 o'clock today. However, we are going to stop at noon because we know that some of you who are Fanning the Flames followers say, I'm bowling for lunch at noon. So by a show of hands, how many people would say they're planning to stay until 1 o'clock? <laughs> so most of you are planning to leave at noon. Is that a fair assessment? All right. So we will try to do the bulk of our work in the next 45 minutes uh, is what we'll try to do. But if you're so inclined, you're so intrigued at the end of that 45 minutes that you want to stay, we will be here eating leftover bagels uh, and drinking stale coffee. So you're welcome to stay with us uh, and take part in that. So without further ado, Christine. Thank you for such a great talk. Um, I'm this isn't a presentation. I'm just going to frame it. And then we're going to break into groups so you get to pick what you want to talk about. Because we're really, as Jerry said, we're looking for your ideas, your input, your list of things that need to be addressed to make this kind of thing happen. We're looking for ideas. We're looking for thought partners. So the big idea behind this is imagine picking a place. Let's say Detroit, or it could be Johannesburg, or someplace else. <laughs> There's plenty of seats. So imagine a place where MSU faculty have long-term engagement research projects. Right, like, uh, maybe it's right in our backyard at East Lansing, Scott Witter's work in the East Lansing Quarter, all the construction you see going on this summer as part of that initiative. Imagine having students engaged in that work. We do that all the time. Capstone students, graduate students, no big deal. Right, research students. Okay, so I'll keep adding the layers here. Imagine that that role for students isn't just a capstone course or a break or a summer, but it's actually three months, or maybe it's six months. Maybe we can even fund it so that it's full time for six months. But what if it was even longer for a year? Imagine the impact of our community partners. Imagine the research that we can build. And in this case, imagine more importantly, all of the skills, knowledge, behaviors, competencies, habits of mind, all those things that students learn in experiential learning like this, designed to create research and academic outcomes. It can be assessed for programmatic learning outcomes, like the liberal learning outcomes that we have as an institution, institutional outcomes, programmatic outcomes, course outcomes, and then imagine other things that, you know, are all the other badges or things that align with professional competencies or other things that people want to be able to show when they graduate, that they have a portfolio of skills, knowledge, and behaviors. More important than that, they've created new knowledge and built on the shoulders of others and left a trail for others to follow on them, you know, the next class. And they can point to a place and a global challenge that they contribute to the solution. All of you are doing pieces of that now in your work with service learning, travel, right, study abroad. You've got pieces of this. What we're trying to do is take on a challenge to design an experience on purpose that's very in-depth and full-time as much as possible, we'll start with a couple weeks or 10 days, you know, or a summer. But what we <coughs> do to support that process with mentors and with technology that would enable to achieve the research outcomes and the learning outcomes. One of the things we want to create is the ability, using some of the tools you've been experimenting with MSU Global, 
is create digital artifacts or a digital trail of people's thoughts, their behaviors, their outcomes, their reflections that can later be assessed as a portfolio in an automated and a manual way and matched up with the learning outcome. So rather than predetermining that this experience is going to be worth three credits of a certain flavor, that would be the minimum that we would do. We're trying to maximize the experience and overlap and design things into the experience with support that will result in maximizing the learning outcomes that can be measured and assessed and mapped to MSU credit at the same time. That's kind of the big idea. Does that sound awesome? Does yes. it sound? Yes. yes. <laughs> Does it sound like, wow, that would be cool. Like, oh my god. Oh, 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 oh my god. Is this, do they pay insurance? How are we going to pay them? You know, the stipends? How do we pay faculty? OK, good. This is exactly the conversation we wanted to have today. Help us figure out what questions to ask ourselves. Help us figure out a roadmap of, well, it might work if you could figure this out. Or it'll never work because this is a barrier. That's exactly what we want to do. Danielle is going to take the next phase where we can harness all of your ideas um, to see how close we can go to making this happen. This is something we would like to do in this coming academic year, 2013 and 2014, in a pilot mode with your help. Danielle. Thanks. Well, I am not alone representing the Creativity Exploratory Sketchy Phrase here. She's the Director of Educational Technology for the College of Arts and Letters and the Co-Director of the Creativity Exploratory. We have a handful of our fellows here, Brooke, Kat, Anna, and Katie, to help out. Um, some of you may be familiar with the Creativity Exploratory already, or some of you may not. I put some packets out on your table so you guys have a chance to kind of see who we are, what we do. We're an innovation and creativity lab in the College of Arts and Letters, and our mission is to provide Cal students with um, co-curricular experiential opportunities. We engage in um, community engagement, research, and creativity projects. It's kind of our shop. Um, our work is framed by a design thinking model. Um, so we go through recursive practices of communication, collaboration, investigation, ideation, simulation, creation, activation, and evaluation. I could honestly stand up here for the next three hours and talk about the amazing work that um, our students do, but I'm going to turn things over um, and show you guys just a quick video that I think provides a good uh, snapshot of some of the work that we do. <coughs> Dorm 
this is the place that wants to develop five skills. And that's open to all of our students, regardless of their major. This is a very, very inclusive space. Everybody's creative, and everybody has an interesting perspective to bring. There's things that I never really thought of that I could do that I learned how to do in the space. It's really about how to use these skills to make a difference in this world. I've always been excited to be approached by someone who wants to know what I'm doing or just wants to know about the space at all. I can talk about this all day long. One of the things I love the most is when students just walk in and say, hey, what is this? And we have a chance to say, oh, come on in, let's show you. Let's, let's get involved, let's build something together. We are over in Linton Hall. You have an opportunity to stop by and visit. You're more than welcome. Um, but I want to topple right over into our goals for today. So there's two things that we're going to do. First, in thinking about the sport, Spartan Core concept, hopefully that's percolated a little bit. I know some of you have heard a bit about it. Um, we want to do some big group brainstorming, project ideas, dreams, plans, goals. And then we're going to do that for maybe 10 minutes or so. We're going to do it really, really quickly. And then we're going to move into some small group discussions where we get to drill down a little bit at some of the logistics of imagining Spartan Core projects and moving into um, the pilot phase. So let's do some big picture imagining. You guys, do you have questions that you need to address before we move into imagining some projects? How does it work? So if I get an idea, how, how does that work? That's one of the reasons we're here today is to figure yeah. that out. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. <laughs> so well, let's start with that. So how does this all work? What are some things we have to figure out? Funding. Funding. What else? Funding, partners, learning outcomes, learning outcomes, priorities. Is that well? Yeah. Can you see a little bit more about that priorities for? Yeah. I saw, so a resource like this gives me the op gives me the idea that it can do anything, and whenever I'm told that it can do anything, I always say, "Tell me one thing." <laughs> All right. So absolutely, doing some um, prioritizing, managing the bigger picture. What else do you need to figure out? How do yeah. students find out about it? Yeah. So um, I'm going to call that publicity slash PR. How do students find out? Curricular integration. Yeah. Curricular integration. Now I'm going to actually pause for a second here on curricular integration. Can you guys think of courses or opportunities in your units that could be expanded into a Spark Core experience? Before I do that, I need to know how it differs from or compares with an internship. Oh, okay. <coughs> so, a bigger sense of the relationships between internships, maybe study abroad, study away, some of those opportunities. Okay. So, we'll get back to this list. Could we scope. Scope. Yeah. Yeah. Associated with scope and mission. Mission? Mission. Yeah. Oh, the just six list is getting long. How to manage all of this. Management. That might involve staff tools. Once students go through an experience like this, helping them understand how to communicate the value of that experience after oh, somebody wants to buy back. You know who it is, though. <laughs> so I kind of decompress and professionalize, right? This could this could be a huge experience. I mean, I imagine this is an absolutely life-changing experience for Spartans. How do we then not just bring them back to campus or back into their home communities, but work with them to kind of integrate what they've been thinking about, what they've been doing, how they've been participating, and reflect on that, and then also think about how, what, how this shape them as, as 
professionals and participants. Absolutely. Yeah. Who are the partners? Yeah. How many are there? And are, you know, both within MSU and outside of MSU. So, MSU and beyond. And then the same with the students. How do you determine who gets to be an educational? So, IDing students. And pulling off the workers. for a second. So you guys have heard a little bit about this. You just heard a little bit more. Um, what are some of the questions or logistics that you would want to know more about? As a student who just graduated and is ready to do an AmeriCorps position outside of the university, I wonder how those differ or how those might work together if I was interested in doing a VISTA position after I graduated and had participated in smart Yeah. So what are the connections um, across Spartan Corps and your undergraduate experience and beyond if you're moving into something like AmeriCorps or Teach for America, is there a continuity across those experiences? I have a picture of pilot program as being um, similar to an independent study where they can test it out with one student and then see if there is room to do it with multiple students at once. So I'm going to put that down as number of students. Are we talking about one for a pilot? Are we talking about 50? For a pilot, how big are these groups? How small are these groups? Do you guys have other? I'm just curious how it's going to stay accessible for students on campus. Is it going to be more responsive for their credits because of that kind of one year school experience? <laughs> so, accessibility. And a, a part of accessibility is going to be cost to students. Absolutely. If you saw this somewhere, if you were looking at it, it was what would be one or two things that it would have to have? I mean, like, you know, what, say, all right, it has to do this and that, or it has to have this or that. What, what would those things be as a student if you were looking and saying, eh, it's interesting, but it doesn't have these things? I think that um, with the credits, it would have to be enough credits that um, the time is equivalent and that it's worth giving up other classes to do. Um, and then at the same time, offering it as join a bunch of other Spartans potentially to go out to a community, engage with alums and community and governmental partners perhaps, um, to make change over a week, a month, a whole semester. It, it's got to be worth walking on campus for, right? Um, it has to be a value added to your curriculum and your professionalization. Supervision is, is crucial. We don't want to just throw you guys out in the field. You want feedback and regular contact points with faculty and alums and more. Um, and past projects. I think that's kind of part of the publicity of the PR, right? To be able to hear from other students, see model projects, get a sense of what you'll be participating, participating in. Okay. Yeah, Julie, yeah, selection and enrollment projects. What's the process for deciding who gets to play? Yeah, So 
I want to, I would hate to see the project get developed and one of those three pieces be missing. So how can we develop experiences where this is core? Learning, service, research, integrated. Deeply valued, part of the assessment, part of the larger experience. Good, yeah. Oh. Um, along with Julie's, the process there, um, think about leadership, both student and faculty leadership. Yep. So what opportunities there are for folks to come in and learn how things work and then potentially build a reputation within the organization? Yeah, absolutely. A reputation across the organization. So yeah. say we have a student who uh, preps for a Spartan Corps, engages in a Spartan Corps experience and then stays on as a mentor, a leader, some of the connection between faculty and alums, yeah. Yeah, maybe connected to that. Is there a role for graduate students? Yeah. Where are grad students here? Oh, you're not gonna raise your hand and say, what about corporations? <laughs> <laughs> students 
from across Michigan State University's curriculum and <laughs> threw them there and said, all right, we have someone representing um, the state, we have someone representing um, some of the water studies that are going on, we've identified some of the key problems and issues, let's work together and kind of imagine what's something that we can do to help make change through the resources that we have here that's going to put an MSU footprint on the state of Michigan and water quality or agricultural development or... Scott, you want to share how you find support? Sure. Um, we just uh, have completed a special project looking at how do you go about creating a world-class community and that's been in a partnership with Michigan State and the Science and the various planning commissions but we have 34 individuals who all have students where we actually looked and did the research about what are the characteristics of like a world class university community, then compared them to what is here now, and then looked at how we, and then went into a design phase of what would that actually look like if it were to be done in this area. And we've made about 20 presentations in that. And Katie and Kim are here, they were participants in that, but they've had a chance to present to you President Simon and others in this mix, but that work is going to expand to another place on campus. It's going to expand to the Capitol. It's going to expand to the Grand Rapids right now. It will expand in Detroit uh, in this next year. But we have a whole group of students who are able to generate money that pays them to be engaged. And for others, it's starting to the faculty member, not much, but enough to get to a meeting somewhere if they want to on the other side. But who are some of these students? Yes. Well, you guys. <laughs> so tell me more. What are your backgrounds? What are your disciplinary areas? What what drew you to this project? Um, we're both students in landscape architecture, um, and we just really wanted to get uh, into like, a part of the community and to see what how we could impact it. Now, were you all landscape architecture students involved in the project? Were there others? No, there were, there were planning students, um, I think all, mostly students in uh, the School of Planning, Design, and Construction. I think there might have been some professional writers, I'm not sure. Um, but it was it was mostly in the um, you know, planning and design school, but it was kind of just, as far as I understood, I was working for a professor and she asked me if I wanted to be part of you know, this cool project that was starting up and then she told me to ask a couple of students. And it kind of just grew from that. Yeah, so word of mouth. And this, I mean, this to me hits right on something we've been talking about in Michigan for a, at least 10, 15 years. I mean, um, we hemorrhage young people. They come here, they're born here, they come to college here, and then they leave. What do we need to do to create the types of communities that anchor people in a 21st century, 21st century economy to get them involved in their communities? And it really connects to the HUD grant, uh, the $3 million in the three counties. We, do have, we have a half a million of that in between my two groups. So we have faculty that are working on that, faculty that brought their students integrated construction management, interior design, landscape architecture, urban and regional planning, and some of our partnerships. But the idea was to have to deal in the real world, how do you make this kind of change? And uh, how do you keep pursuing it? But to give the students a chance to have expressed their knowledge. And I think the difference that I saw in the students from the first time that we met, we met every Friday for a semester as this work was getting done, uh, was amazing. And it would be presented and it would be to see the bigger picture. And Katie and Kim did a phenomenal job in, in their growth. And uh, are both now excited to jump into the next phases. So that talking back to the public, the university, to others was kind of a, was a critical point. What was the value added of having a multidisciplinary group of students rather than, like, say, five landscape architecture students who could do phenomenal work? But what happens when we bring in other voices? In changing this for us is that in, in the school we look at that you have to plan something to uh, design it and then go to the construction phase. So how do you breathe the life and to see it actually happen uh, as we move along? And we have a uh, practicum courses that we put a plan to students so that we have students 
students in over 100 communities in the state of Michigan working on landscape architecture and regional planning uh, activities uh, all the time. We're a professional school, so uh, it's critical that our students are out here. And having those different, it sounds like if I'm, I'm kind of summarizing this right, research and development, for them to go hand in hand, you have to have a multiplicity of partners and voices. Exactly, and we're bringing a group from uh, Romania that we've been working on, and we have students in this in Romania that are coming in September, but we've been working with them for some time and exchanging the data. We also exchange a group with, uh, in Germany each year with our planning students, who we either go there with the group Eight to ten days on a specific project where they have to come back and to ensure that they have to present to the community. So, if you're a US MSU student, you end up doing this in Germany. If you're a German student, you end up doing that in Germany. Fantastic. Well, I think what we might do, um, we've got two a possible projects, well, an actual project site that could be further developed for Spark Core. We have an actual project that I think well models some of the principles and practices of Spartan Core. We're going to toggle now um, into working in smaller groups, going back to some of these logistical issues. Now that we've got two possible projects, and you guys can maybe see the expanse and imagine what these projects might look like, we're going to ask you guys to consider um, four questions, and we're going to have you get into groups, each group addressing one of these questions. Here are the questions. How can we design projects, and I'm going to give these all to you, no, no need to scribble seriously. How can we design projects that map into or onto existing research here in our units, in our departments? How can we create and undertake an assessment plan, thinking about learning goals, learning objectives, and then also the goals for all of the stakeholders involved? Third, how can we best support learner skill while they're still in the field? to create that support, that mentoring, and that ongoing nimble, just-in-time learning. And then finally, and you guys have already identified, this is a key um, consideration, what sort of criteria um, do we need to establish to figure out which projects we're going to select to be Spartan Core projects, especially when we get into this pilot phase? So four questions. So you might be interested a little bit more in research, assessment might be your area, um, selection criteria might be, or we, you can just stay where you are and we'll kind of give you a prompt to think through. So let me get some backup to you guys. Let me just add um, So a lot of the ideas that uh, on the other side of the board and these, they're, you know, Scott's already doing this, he doesn't need to part of the board. <coughs> you know, we already do service learning. Here. How many of you already do something like this in your curriculum already? Just for the show of hands. Okay, so what we're talking about, we know it works, right? That's why we do it. What we're talking about here is, could we make it longer? Could we make it deeper? Could we achieve even more learning outcomes with it? Not just by making it longer. That would be one variable. Could we make it longer? Could we design it to be broader? Could we design it more on purpose to even have more of an impact with research and community outcomes? It's not that we don't do these things already. It's not that this is brand new. We've been doing it for ages. It's what we got an award. Somebody ranked us really highly for all of our co-curricular and, and things that we do at MSU with our network of networks, our international collaboration. We're a research university. This is how we work, right? The question is, how do we make it an even bigger part of the student experience, not just something that's um, plugged in where it can be plugged in? Like, could we really take the reins and make it bigger and a bigger part of a student's total experience? There's a bunch of ways we can do that, and that's what this is about. You know, it, it seems to me, I mean, we've been talking about students, but it seems to me the intention is to impact all these stakeholders equally. Yes. So it's the alums, it's the partners, and so on. Um, Dale Smiley, if you say and, that, yeah. and so I think the, the idea of, well, we have focused almost totally in this discussion about students, yeah. which is fine. But the value added for them is the benefits that the others receive as well. And so I think that's... That, <coughs> Thank that, you for emphasizing that's that That's the point. tough part. That's the tough part. Yeah. Because some are not connected to us directly, like the alums. Yeah, yeah it's the tough part because it requires trust relationships built up over time. You can't just show up at some doors and say, okay, there's 50 of us, let's go do something. It, which is one reason that it's so valuable. It's, it's, it's based on a scarce resource, which is... Relationships, trust networks, work over time, 
you know, it's not something you can just do it automatically, right? It takes a lot of time to develop these and create an effective, great impact research and a good experience for students as well that creates outcomes. So I think, thank you for emphasizing that point. That's critical. Oh, let, let me make one, one additional one, and that's the relationship of MSU to all these stakeholders. And that's sort of the bottom line for, for, for the university. Because um, there are many benefits that come to MSU as an institution as a result. Okay, so let's, can, we, can we call that institutional reputation? Reputation. Cool. All right, so we have 15 minutes or so, 10 minutes, to do a little brainstorming work in the core group, so people have to get up and move. They have to. So, which would be an awesome time to get a little bit of food, too, since there's a lot of food. But let's do this. Let's have um, people interested in talking about research aspects, kind of in this area. Folks talking about um, assessment. In the middle here, um, we'll do um, supporting kind of just-in-time learning over here, and then criteria for selecting projects over here. Got it? All right, so up, shift. I think we talked about the value of mentorship being absolutely critical um, because if you go into it with this kind of open-ended project, um, having that mentorship part is so valuable to kind of help make sure that you stay the course. Okay. Who else can we be talking to or else you might be at the table in terms of thinking about building mentorship models? It's a trickier one. Groups like institutional? Yeah. Faculty? Oh, faculty. Yeah. Awesome. Good. I would say um, we talked a lot about marriage of multiple skills, multiple disciplines, getting as many people as you can, faculty, I think alumni especially, and young alumni, um, just because they're out there and thinking about it, and people would feel very much to them. Yeah. Yeah, they need a long similar for sure, early on. I think not only publicizing the students and faculty, but to these organizations and how this will actually really impact them um, and they can work with students and faculty members that have fresh ideas and want to um, help them with their research and help the organization move forward. Does it answer both? We should have more organizational representation here. Awesome, right. So one thing you're excited about or a connection that you see to your work. And then who else might we talk to? Brett. Um, can you say what the first one? Like the first one is, what are you excited about? What connections do you see between your own work and yeah. Spartan Corps? I'm excited as a student who is an undergraduate researcher. I see that this is a way for students to get engaged and involved in research that might not have known about it before. It just makes research and uh, involvement outside of the classroom more accessible. I think like if we could pull in researchers outside of MSU to maybe alumni who are doing research that's not necessarily immediately related to MSU, would be really interesting. The uh, challenge is, is to try to help students with understanding what might be available. Departments and colleges and so forth, I know some around the university have people that uh, try to compile lists of what's going on within their organization and so forth. The student typically doesn't know this. Uh, uh, one of the things, if you're a student signing up for credit, nobody's mentioned it, but how are you going to be evaluated at the end of this? I think that would be an issue of uh, what are the outcome measures in the grade? A uh, project of pulling these, all this stuff together, uh, stuff when I'm working on, it, work together, Spartan Innovations, The Hatch, Creative Commons, TIC, Neo Center, Access to Money through Kaufman, Blackstone, connecting with LEAP, a new Business 491 course, connecting with Road Engineering, about 140 characters. I think that one of the interesting things for me is, is where we're going, how meaningful can this experience get. So if you look out at 2050, right now about 50% of the people live in urban environments in the world. It's going to move to 25. This is the largest migration of people in, in less than 40 years that's probably ever happened. The question is, is how will we provide students with the opportunity to be able to work in that kind of an environment? And so I think that you need to prioritize. We don't need to lift 100 ships at once. We need to find two or three, hit a home run, and then let it spread from there as it moves forward. But I think if you're going to get, you know, when I speak with the industry that is involved in, in my area, they all know where they're going to be in 10 years. Mm -hmm. The question is, do we know where we're going to be in 10 years? And, and looking at things, uh, in 2000, we had a uh, commencement speaker that talked about that the students would be able to come back to their 2050 
uh, reunion by hitting their glasses and saying Breslin Center. <laughs> you know, 10 years later, 12 years later, Google already has a set of glasses coming out, not quite at that level. Um, 10 years ago, we didn't have a battery that could rent a car over 100 miles. Today, we have one that'll do uh, 250 plus miles and can hit zero to four, uh, 60 in four seconds. So Things are changing. How are we going to incorporate this change? Because if we don't deal with this migration, yeah. um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to deal with everything. But I think those are yeah. the kinds of things that will attract students and it will yeah. attract the industry to be, how do we prepare? How do we get a better school? Absolutely. One of the huge priorities that we have for this year is doing what we're doing social action projects. So providing opportunities for these graduate students to do real work that makes the world a better place as opposed to just focus on their own personal bottom line. Uh, and so we have been in the process over the last six months with a group of faculty looking at, for the executive students who are working full time, how can we scope projects that are meaningful where they can contribute in you know different ways than our undergrad students do because they have that real world experience in addition to the, the education in the business world. So um, this is really timely from that perspective and I'm really, you know, the big question we had is how do we scope them and how do we, we because in an ideal world, I've got 150 students every year that I'd like to plug in, but I don't know how to manage that and how to encourage faculty. Yay, to 150 be a part. students! <laughs> and one thing that we didn't talk about that I think is also important is physical connection, not just connecting digitally. Well, I mean, I'm always connect I'm always excited about projects that do this kind of outreach and are sort of organic in the way that we seem to be talking about it. Um, of course, I'm thinking about Literacy Corps and the kind of things that we're doing with that. Hey, Literacy Corps and Spartan Corps. That's a connection I immediately see. That change is happening. Yeah. Spartan. Bob? Yeah. Um, some of the concerns that I have on this is uh, um, some of the ethical platforms for this of, of what it means for folks who get in, in, involved with this, not only looking at or learning outcomes, but the, the products that are generated in the service of those learning outcomes, what happens with those and how do people across the community take uh, ownership of that and understand how they're buying in and how they're not buying in. And I think that's going to talk back over to the corporate sponsorship and, and involvement, etc. But um, I think it would be a really important thing to address. Absolutely. Up Individuals creatively um, address some of the logistic issues about exciting opportunities and projects like this. Um, my contact info is there, our website is there. Please contact me if you have questions, you want to talk more, you just want to stop by and explore our shop. Did you have? Yeah, if you would, I don't think the sign in sheet made it all the way around. So if you didn't sign in, it's right up here on the front table. Would you please? Uh, just jot down your name and an email so we can stay connected with you as the conversations continue to move forward. Um, also, if you want to put a little asterisk by your name, if you might be interested, one of the conversations we've had about bringing groups of people together to talk about some of the areas that we've had today. So if you might be interested in continuing to provide your input, just put a little check mark, a little asterisk by your name, and um, we, we will purposely bug you. Otherwise, we'll just insanely bug you. But um, if you do that, that'd be great. So that's just up front here. And I want to say thank you uh, for coming uh, today. And if you can stay, please do, and we'll kind of reconvene and continue the conversation. But let's pause, as I know some people are probably ready for lunch. Yes, if you thank get a Danielle bagel. and Scott. Yep. Thanks.